There's a lawyer right now in Hollywood that's going around Thanos snapping a bunch of remakes and sequels. Hey guys, my name is Chris and today I'm going to run you down a bunch of movies that were in development. Most of these were remakes or sequels of popular 80s franchises that now thanks to a new law are no longer going to be able to get made. I'll be telling you the details about this movie, why it's happening, and whether it's a good or bad thing. But real quick guys, one of these movies... My freaking man, Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger. You leave a like and pay your respects. Also, let me know which one on here you would have liked to have seen and comment down below the one you were like, yeah, it's probably a good idea that they didn't make that one. Starting off with the first movie here that started this domino effect of all these other movies disappearing from studios is the Friday the 13th reboot. Some of you might already be aware of this. It's kind of a famous thing going on in Hollywood, but original writer of the first Friday the 13th, Victor Miller, is using a law for from the 70s that says after 35 years the original author of the work can claim back the ownership and it's been 35 years for friday 13 so he went to the studio and said hey this belongs to me again which put a hold on the reboot they were going to make now the reboot was actually going to be produced by lebron james yeah that's right LeBron James. he's trying to get into the movie business up his game up a little bit and friday 13th is one of his favorite horror franchises there were so many rumblings of what they were trying to do with this movie since it would have been the 13th friday the 13th one idea that was first tossed around is that it was going to be a found footage movie of a bunch of kids entering Camp Crystal Lake and well you know a found footage film. Luckily that idea was scrapped and they were going to go with something that hadn't been done before and where we get to follow Jason Voorhees in a winter time period. Out of 12 movies we never got to see Friday the 13th in a snowy atmosphere and that's what they were aiming for. I really would have preferred them continue a sequel to the 2009 Friday the 13th movie because I consider that a really great reboot. I have no idea why critics were so harsh on the film because it did a good job it had its flaws but I think it was still a nice step up. Getting back to the legal reasons, this one is kind of tricky. Even though Victor Miller is wanting ownership back, he's only responsible for the first Friday the 13th when the studio is arguing that the character Jason wasn't really manifested until later movies. Which is kind of true because in the first Friday the 13th, spoilers, Jason isn't the killer. It's the mother and he doesn't have a role in it either. And plus he doesn't wear the hockey mask till the third film and everything that made Jason Jason didn't happen until later movies. So it's still unknown if the studio will get to keep the franchise and continue their reboot or if the series will go to Victor Miller and who knows if he's gonna wanna make movies. The next movie we're gonna talk about is one we actually already got in theaters but it was the reason why it got made that was kinda shocking. It was because of this law Stephen King, kind of the yeet king of this right now, is sending in a ton of notices to studios now that their movies are turning 35 years old. Stephen King is wanting the rights back to those films. The way this law works is that they have to give a two-year notice to the studio saying, hey, you have two years left with this property, and then after that, it becomes mine again. Stephen King did that for Pet Cemetery, and the studio was like, well, I'm pretty sure we can make a Pet Cemetery movie in two years. And that's exactly what happened with 2019's Pet Cemetery. That movie is essentially a cash grab. It was the studio just milking it one last bit before they had to give it back to Stephen King. And that explains a lot, because that movie... And it was just really an F you to Stephen King as like, you want this back? Fine, but we're going to tarnish its reputation. Other movies on the list that Stephen King requested the rights back to are The Mist, The Dead Zone, Cujo, Children of the Corn, Creep Show, and Cat's Eye. All movies that the studio could have had a reboot or sequel to, but now that they're with Stephen King, it is his decision whether he's going to license them to another studio and continue making movies. Here's the other side of it where this isn't completely bad news. Because a person like Stephen King, who obviously has a lot of love and passion for his writing and stories he's created, would want them done in the best possible way. So now that he owns a movie like Cujo again, he could go to Blumhouse, make a new deal, and license the property to them while also having a few says on what he wants the movie to be like because we all know he's not a fan of the movie The Shining. As masterful as that is, he hated the way that movie turned out. So this is kind of the good side of the properties going back to their original owners because they're going to get shown the love and care that they deserve other than a studio just rushing it out for a cash grab. Next film on here that is in jeopardy with its sequels is a movie that comes out this month. Terminator Dark Fate, which will be the sixth 
Terminator film, which is also a reboot of the franchise being a direct sequel to Terminator 2, ignoring all the past films. I'm very excited to see it. I'm looking forward to it. Big Terminator fan. It looks now that they're in jeopardy of not being able to make any sequels if this movie is a success. James Cameron right now is the owner of the franchise, but when the movie first came out, he wasn't the only one responsible for it. A female screenwriter by the name of Gail Ann Hurd actually helped James Cameron out with the screenplay and is now requesting her 50-50 ownership. What this basically means is even if Terminator Dark Fate is the best Terminator movie we've ever gotten and makes a billion dollars at the box office, one person can now go ahead and request to stop the sequelization of any more movies until she gets her fair share as she is an original creator. If the Terminator Dark Fate movies are a success, they will have to struck up a new deal with Gail and Heard and James Cameron so that they continue on with the franchise. That is, if she doesn't have her own say on what she would like to change. Because they have already said that they plan a new trilogy if this franchise goes well. And that means splitting the money up more ways and the studio is just making less and less from Terminator. They don't have a big incentive to keep the franchise going. That really sucks, man, because I don't know about you, I love me a Terminator franchise. And as much as I have to respect these original creators getting the licensing back, it's crazy how much one person can stop an entire franchise from continuing. But next up are two franchises that were set to be rebooted by Disney themselves is the Predator and Alien franchise. Thanks to Disney buying Fox earlier this year, they did announce a slay of movies that they were going to try to reinvigorate for the fans and one of those happened to be the Alien franchise. It looks now like the original screenwriters of both Predator and Alien are requesting the rights back. Disney is a powerful corporation and they have all the money in the world for lawyers so this could still not happen but the law is pretty clear and cut. It's been 35 years, they're the original writers, I don't know how you can loophole it anymore. As weird as it is to say Disney is rebooting Alien and you think, oh, family friendly, I thought the same thing of the Marvel franchise when they bought that out, but they've produced nothing but tier quality films. I can imagine they were only going to do the same with the Alien and Predator franchise, especially with how bad the previous Predator reboot that we just recently got was. Because another action franchise on the list is Die Hard, which was set to get a reboot by Fox that was actually canceled by Disney before this even happened. I talked about it in a previous video of movies Disney canceled when they bought Fox Studios. But that movie was said to be a prequel slash sequel of the Die Hard franchise where we were going to have an old Bruce Willis while flashbacks to a younger actor playing a young John McClane. This could be actually one of those movies that is not canceled and they want the rights back so they can actually make this film. I'm sure the original writer of Die Hard understands the fan base and the cult behind those movies and thinks to himself, if Disney wants to cancel that, I'll take my property back and sell it to somebody else who'd be willing to make that movie. And the last movie I'll end it off with is A Nightmare on Elm Street that is actually already officially a victim of this law. While some of these other movies that I mentioned are in those two year waiting period or are in legal trouble trying to figure out who should own the property, A Nightmare on Elm Street has already been given back to its original screenwriter. For you Freddy Krueger fans, you might know Wes Craven, the man, the myth, the legend, God rest his soul, had passed away. However, like I said, the lawyer going around in Hollywood who is a aware of this law and is just looking for clients left and right, informed the West Craven estate of this and they decided to request the rights back and Warner Brothers was like, take it. And as much as I gotta respect the original Wes Craven family owning the rights back to a property that belonged to their father, grandfather, the studio had interviews where they were talking about a Nightmare on Elm Street reboot that it was in their plans, that they were focused on the Conjuring series and those movies, but Nightmare on Elm Street was still something they wanted made. It would be another reboot, it would go back to the horror roots, and they wouldn't try just making the same story like they did with the Nightmare on Elm Street of 2010. But the fact that Warner Brothers gave it up so easily without even fighting with some lawyers or having the two-year wait period and was like, you want it back? Just take it. Let's me know how little they respected and wanted this franchise and why it's probably a good reason 
that it went back to the Wes Craven family. Because now Blumhouse can come knocking at their door and go, hey, we're doing a good job with Michael Myers. Would you like to work out a deal so we can put up good old Freddy Krueger back in theaters? My only fear is they could be like a Robert Zemeckis. Now, if that name isn't familiar to you, it's the man responsible for my favorite movie of all time, Back to the Future. He currently still owns the rights to the film and has said multiple, multiple times there will not be a sequel, there will not be a reboot. As long as he lives, they will not touch Back to the Future. Like I said, it's kind of bad news because we as fans want these movies out in theaters in development getting made already but at the same time we have to applaud these people who are taking the rights back to something they created and are not being abused by studios who remake and reboot these over and over just for the purposes of financial reasons although some of these films are canceled or delayed for now they could end up in a nice safe home in a couple of years but that's not even the final thing to worry about every year that goes by another movie turns 35 years old and another screenwriter is able to take back that property. Like I was talking with Stephen King, one day he's gonna request the rights back to Pennywise and who knows if he'll want to continue another remake or reboot since that has already been done. So this could push studios to be more original with their ideas and create something new as opposed to just sticking to what's old and nostalgic because if they do that, they risk losing that franchise and their bread and butter. I don't know, but you guys let me know down below. Like I said, comment which ones you're sad about or which one you're happy is being sent back to the original owner very curious to hear your guys's opinion on this also be sure to like and subscribe follow me on twitter at 3c film review as always i'm chris take care